Welcome to this short video on registration for the Cisco Digital Platform for Cities TSA Net Relationship. In this video, we're going to walk you through the steps for your submission into this collaborative relationship. This relationship will establish a mechanism for your support department and Cisco's support department to collaborate on multi vendor issues. Before we get started, you should understand that part of this submission will include documenting your process for the Cisco support staff to contact your support staff. If you need to pull in specific individuals involved in support, please do so before beginning your submission. There are three general steps to this submission, entering your company information, accepting the TSA Net membership agreements, and documenting your support engagement process. Upon finalizing this submission, Cisco and TSA Net are going to be notified. TSA Net will then await approval from Cisco, and when received, you'll be notified of your participation in this relationship. Before we get started, we need to verify if you're one of the nearly 500 existing TSA Net members. And this is important because if you're an existing TSA Net member, the process is going to be different for you to join into this relationship. To find out if you're an existing member of TSA Net, you can simply go to www.tsanet.org and click on the Members tab. If your name appears, your company name appears in any one of these lists right here, then you should not submit through the landing page that we showed you before, and you should contact TSA Net. We'll show you how to do that. If I go back to that landing page, you can just simply click on existing TSA Net member, fill out this information, and click on request access. Uh, that will notify TSA Net, and a TSA Net representative will get in touch with you and will imp you, implement you into this relationship manually. Okay, so now we verified that you're not a existing TSA Net member, and you're going to go ahead and, and go through this process of getting into this relationship. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Continue, and it's going to take me to the next page here of where you're going to enter your company information. Now you can see here what I've done is I've gone ahead and pre-populated this, and you notice if you scroll down a little bit, it'll ask you for a Support Operations Management contact. Uh, if, if you're that person, then uh, we won't need you to put in anybody else. You can just click on uh, Same as Above and Continue. The next step it's going to take you to is the TSA Net Membership Agreement. Now, at the time that we did this recording, there's one agreement here that's not been finalized called the Cisco TSA Net Addendum. And that specifies the operational elements of this relationship. So this will appear when you actually go in and, and do this on a real-time basis. Uh, but these are the membership agreements for, for you not only into the Cisco relationship, but also into TSA Net. And before you continue, you need to accept all of these three agreements. Uh, you'll see the code of conduct, the license agreement, and the addendum that you'll, you'll also be able to view and print those out if you'd like to do that ahead of time. So once I've done that, I can go ahead and click Continue. And now it's going to take me to the documentation of your support process. This is probably the most complicated thing of all of this. Uh, it, it generally is just a document telling Cisco engineers, this is how I want you to contact me and how I'm going to engage and, and work with you. <clears throat> what you're going to see down here below is actually the document in its entirety. And what we're going to do is we're going to end up filling this information out uh, by these uh, areas right up here at the top of the screen. Now, the areas that you'll need to concentrate on will be numbers 2, 4, 5, and 6. And there must be something in each one of these, otherwise uh, you will receive an error on your submission. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and start out with support hours. And I can just simply either click on the plus tab over here or just click on support hours. It's going to pull that up. Assuming you have a 24-7, 365 process, then that's all there is to it. I've finished that. It's already pre-filled in there. You do not need to do anything with the applies to. We can go right into contact preparations requirements. And before I click on this, I want to show you that what's happening down here is that this area right here is the contact preparations requirement. Before you call is what we're going to fill out. If I go up here and look at this, and I click on that, it's just a, simply a, a series of check boxes. So I can say, well, before Cisco's to contact me, I need to know who this mutual customer is. So I can say that that's going to be required. Or maybe it's optional. It would be kind of nice to know what the service level priority is. So whatever these are, I can go ahead and fill these out. I can even add new requirements if you want to do that. And you notice what's happened to the form below is it's automatically went ahead and put that in there. 
So the next area here is going to be the contact information. This is generally a, a free text area. There are actually, we, we gave you up to three different methods uh, for you to, to document of how Cisco would engage you. Uh, they're really pretty simple. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do just a short one here for demonstration purposes, and I'm going to say place a call. And you notice it's just going to bring up this basic contact instructions, and I can go ahead and put information in this free text area here on how Cisco uh, would engage me through a phone number. And you can see here what I've done is just put in some simple contact information. It's so likely you're going to want to be uh, a lot more uh, verbose on on what you're going to do, but you, essentially what you're doing is you're you're guiding the Cisco engineer uh, into your support department to make sure that they get to the right area uh, where they can collaborate and work with you on, on a multi-vendor issue. Now, if necessary, I've got a secondary contact uh, method as well as a third one if I wanted to put that in, but I must have something in this uh, this area, this contact area. And if I go down to the last one, which is going to be my special escalation instructions, this again is another freeform text area. Now this would be used if for for some reason that, that above a phone number or whatever that process was didn't work. So this call needs to be escalated because something's not going right. We want to put information in there that will direct them typically to an individual or a process uh, where they can get that call escalated. And you can see here what I put in is just some information about getting a hold of a, an individual or someone that would be able to, to escalate that call. You can notice that what it's done is it's actually populated this down here. So I've got that all set. I'm ready to go. This form, you can come back in and edit this once the, the process is, is complete and you've been approved into the relationship. Uh, and that is actually taken care of in another video. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and continue. And that's all there is to it. Now, what's going to happen now is this, this will trigger an email off to both TSANet and to Cisco. Once this has been approved, then you'll receive another email uh, telling you that you have been uh, joined into this relationship, and you'll be ready to go. And that's all there is to it for joining into this relationship. Thanks for watching.